I, when John got up to um, start the meeting today, I just started laughing and really laughing. Um, today is Palm Sunday, as everybody knows. Next week's Easter, and you know, if you're a good pastor, you should be talking about Palm Sunday and Easter things. And what I felt like God put on my heart today had nothing to do with it, and um, and so I was just kind of like, you know, this week and for the last couple of days, like. Am I really missing it? Am I just not hearing God? What's really going on? And, and John read one of my scriptures that God put on my heart. And um, he talked about the fact that if you want to live for Christ, you have to die to yourself. And, and this is really a thing that God's put on my heart. It has nothing to do with the time of year, but um, I've never been called religious anyway. So um, this is where we're at. The, what has this video got to do with anything? It has to do with the fact that we just kind of go through life the way life brings us through life. We kind of go through life the way the world tells us to go through life. We kind of go through life the way our parents did it. And we just kind of go through it. And we don't actually listen to God, listen to Jesus, and find out what he wants. And um, if you could put up that, um, that little cartoon. This little cartoon really hit me this week that goes along with this too. Um, and that's what that video was all about, that this... This man just went through life and he didn't spend time with his son. And then when his son grew up, his son did the same thing. You know, exactly the same thing. This is a trap that we fall into. And then this little, little cartoon thing here, um, it's called recalculating. How many people have ever heard your GPS unit say recalculating? <laughs> right? It's, it'll be there soon. I, it's it's in, on Internet Explorer. Did we, did we close it? We're having technical difficulties. Oh, don't use Internet Explorer. Okay. So I'm going to explain to you what the cartoon is about. The cartoon is the, um, is the helm of a ship. The helm is where you steer a ship, and it's the helm of the ship Titanic. And the guy is at the helm, and he's got his instruments all around him, and he's staring at an iceberg in front of the ship. And the GPS is saying to him, recalculating. So we're going to hit an iceberg, and so, whoops, we made a mistake. We're recalculating now. There it is. Recalculating. And this is kind of the same thing, that the, the same thing that video is, that we kind of like just go through life, really listening to the Lord. We're not really, we have our own ideas, our own plans, our own agendas. And then when we get into trouble, we're like, Lord, what happened? How come you didn't save me from this disaster? What's going on here? I, I thought, you know, I thought you loved me. And the world says recalculating. Well, maybe we should have done something a little bit different. Listen, you know, I actually really love technology. So I'm saying this before I say what I'm going to say. I really like technology. Down at the, um, one time the, the belt on my John Deere tractor fell off and I looked underneath it to put it back on. There's about 18 pulleys underneath it. And I'm like, what? And so I actually right on my phone, laying on the ground, I googled you know, the style of tractor I had. It gave me the diagram. I put the whole thing back together right there. I love technology. That being said, I've had a lot of trouble with GPS. <laughs> <laughs> GPS in my truck one time led me to the Taconic State Parkway that I can't go on with my truck. One time it led me on the parkway to an, e to an entrance that doesn't even exist anymore. One time that my GPS led me to a throughway entrance. It wasn't an entrance at all. It was actually a rest area on a throughway on the civilian side of the throughway. You can't get to the throughway through a rest area on the other side of it. One time I was, on, I was going out in the countryside and I had my GPS on the job and I had my Google Maps on the job on my phone and I came to a T in the road and the maps told me to take a left, my GPS told me to take a right. <laughs> Recalculating. And then finally, you all know the story of how I followed my GPS towing my boat into a 12-foot railroad trestle cost $4,000 worth of damage to the boat. You can go online and Google boats fall, running into railroad trestles. You can watch it online, trucks and, and things, doing it all the time. I did it because I was following my GPS because I wasn't listening to my wife, who God told her not to go that way. 
She's sick today, by the way. It's really, really rare for Lynn to be sick. So anyway, I, the point here is that we have this reliance in today's culture, in today's world, to listen to, for things to guide us that are not from God. We are, they're not from God. We rely on worldly guidance instead of God's guidance. We rely on whatever it is, parents telling us to go to college. Maybe that's not God's plan. Maybe it is and you don't want to go. Whatever it is, it's all kinds of things. And, and, and then disaster strikes when we don't follow him. We just follow what we want to do. Disaster strikes, we cry out, and, and, and we, then we just keep doing it. Thomas Edison said this. This is really, really funny. He said, I haven't failed. I found 10,000 ways that don't work. He said, I haven't failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that don't work. So he's either very to be admired for being stick to or he's to be pitied for being stupid, for keep trying something that's not working. I try to ignore things in culture that are depressing, like politics. I try to ignore that on the radio. I hate, I, I just, it's very depressing to me. Movie stars' opinions. I'm like, who cares what their opinion is? Just because they know how to act and they're beautiful doesn't mean they're, they have anything worth saying. Some things are very depressing to me. Um, I try not to do it. There's all kinds of worldly concepts, concept, concepts that are out there. But lately, there's this one thing that's just, it's just getting more and more precedent in today's society. And I, it's hard for me to ignore it anymore. And it's a focus on self. The focus on ourselves everywhere in our educational system and, and everybody. It's always, you know, focus on you first. You come first. You're first. And if you can get you first, everything else will fall in line. And we've been doing that since about the 1950s when we decided that the Bible isn't really worth following. It's just nice to have around the house. And we've decided the culture knows more. It's better. The education system can better guide us. And we've been following that stuff. And since that time, college students, there's been a 90% increase in anxiety, depression, loneliness, suicide, and addictions since that time of focusing on yourself instead of following God. Turning aside from what Jesus said to do. The world says, when I say the world, I mean the experts of the world, those that we listen to, say, so take care of yourself first, you come first. You take care of yourself, everything else will be okay. You've got to love yourself before you can love other people. That's what they say. They don't say it out, just outright like that. It's not a direct hit. They, they say other things. They make it sound a little bit nicer. Like You need to have a self-awareness. You need to know what you're good at. You need to know what your priorities are. You know, you need to really, if you really concentrate on yourself, and once you do that, you'll figure everything else will come along. The only problem is Jeremiah said in, in 17, he said, the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? The heart is deceitful beyond all cure. Who can understand it? So the world's trying to tell us to understand your heart. The Bible's saying, not a good idea. That's why David prayed, Lord, create in me a clean heart. Because he knew his heart couldn't be trusted. You concentrate on yourself, you're doomed for failure. But then we go through life, we're based on self, and then we wonder, what happened? Self-reliance. Be an individual. You can do it. You can do it. You can do anything you want, the world tells us. You can, do, you can be anything you want. You want to be a movie star? Be a movie, you want to be president? You can be anything you want. You can do anything. And then Christians go on in Philippians saying, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. One of the most misquoted verses in the Bible. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And what Paul was saying there, if God is leading you to do it, you can do anything. And then we, then we get into a, a situation one day where I can do it, I can do it, and then you realize I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm heading for an iceberg. This is bad. Recalculating. 
You can do it if it's his plan, not your plan. What's his plan? John, you want to read that again for me? Got to find it first? Oh, no, not that underlined thing, right? There you go. Read that for us again. Good. <laughs> Technology, huh? We calculated. <laughs> Sorry, I should have warned him. Okay. John twelve twenty four. I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains grain. It never becomes more by itself alone. But if it dies, it produces many others and yields a rich harvest. Jesus wasn't talking about raising food. He wasn't talking about how to plant seeds. He's talking about us. We're the grain. And unless we die, we're not bearing fruit. We will simply remain alone. We're not going to accomplish anything in life. So what Jesus' counsel is, stop serving yourself and start serving him and those whom he leads you to. Die to what you want and start serving him. Best example I've ever had in my, in my life for that is my wife, Linda. She stopped serving her hippie self in 1971 to give her heart to the Lord. And what a blessing, what fruit has just been coming out of her life. But I'm just going to give you a little thing, just like back, I'm, it, we're almost done, I'm just going to leave this thought, because this is really just so precious. But back in 1971, when um, I got out of school, and uh, high school, and um, what I lived for during those times was sports, parties. Um, I enjoyed drinking. I told you about my little rum machine in my car, right? The little rum machine that I put in there. Um, I was a very popular person because of my car and its equipment. <laughs> and um, I had a full scholarship to go to uh, pre-med for the University of Vermont. Had everything going for me. I came down here for the spend the summer with some of my family, and, um, and um, I ran into Jesus. And uh, I, I just like, wow, this is, you know, this is really, this is it. So I gave my heart to the Lord and, um, you know, spent the rest of the summer here, and then I went to college and uh, wanted to, to pursue my career. What was my goal was my career. I'm going to go to college, and I'm going to do this thing. And yeah, thank you, Jesus, for coming into my life but now I've got to go to school. So at the University of Vermont, there's a big parking lot. There's a huge field uh, between the parking lot and the, and the main buildings, and uh, I had to park every day, every morning there, and walk across this field, and, and it was really beautiful, and then, and then go to the classrooms there. And, and um, I'm struggling in school because I'm trying to drink a lot while I'm going. You know, that's always fun to do. And um, so partying a lot and stuff like that. But, so I'm going to school every day, and then one night... Um, Don't laugh yet. I, I'm, I haven't shed a tear yet, so don't laugh yet. One night, I, yeah, <laughs> I had a dream. And um, the dream was that I got, I got out of my car to go to college, and, the, uh, and I start walking across the same field that I do every day, and suddenly there's this brick wall in front of me. And the brick wall went just, I couldn't see over it, I couldn't see around it, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh. I am not going to be able to get to class. What can I do? And I struggled with it. I struggled trying to find out how to, how to get going, how to get through this thing. And then I woke up. Whew. And um, God said to me, that's not the path I have for you. He said to me, I don't want you to go to college. I want you to get in your car. I want you to go back to New York. And I want, you to te I want to teach you how to follow me. But wait a minute. It gets, it gets better because this is a very, very important point. But he said to me, but if you don't want to, I'll remove the wall and you can go. See, God doesn't force anybody 
to do anything. It's your choice. Either serve him or you don't. Follow him or you don't. Just don't expect him to remove the to iceberg in front of your boat if you don't follow him. He may just completely out of mercy. I've seen God just so mercifully help people even though they haven't been following him. But the point is God will lead you to follow him and it means dying to what you want to do. Dying to what you want to do. Anybody in this room who has kids, and there's a lot of you, that are doing a great job with your kids, you die to yourself all the time to raise those little suckers. <laughs> right? It's not until you put your head on the pillow late at night and you're saying, finally, me, I can go to sleep now. But our lives are to be like that. Our whole lives are to be like that. I want this, I want that. It doesn't matter what I want anymore. So what does Jesus want? What does Jesus want from my life? And then he's going to lead you to serve others and get your mind off of you and get it onto other people and onto him, his choice. And he will not force you to do that. It will be completely your choice. Then you can go to the Bible and you can start claiming the scriptures that he says that in him, by the fruits of the Spirit, you're going to have real peace. You're going to have real joy. You're going to have strength to do anything that he brings across your path because you're in his will. And that's what that scripture on the sign is all about. He's got a plan for you to prosper you and to do good. I want to close with the scripture in Psalm 1. How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the world. Counsel the wicked. Counsel the people who have disregarded God's word. How blessed is a man who does not walk in that counsel. Nor does he stand in the path of sinners. Nor does he hang out with them and do the things that sinners do. And nor does he sit in the seat of scoffers and people who are constantly grumbling and complaining and, and are not following God. But in God's law he meditates day and night. His delight is in the law of the Lord. And he will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of living water. Firmly planted, that's very important, by streams of living water. It yields its fruit in its season. Its leaf never withers. And in everything he does, he prospers. That's following Jesus. And that's saying no to yourself. Folks, let me just come back up. Folks, I don't know who this is for today. It has nothing to do with the season. But I felt God put that on my heart today. And I'm telling you that whether you have never made that choice before or not, make it today to follow him. I don't know where I'd be today if I had pursued college and gone off to become some surgeon or something somewhere. I don't know what would have happened or whatever. But I know this, that when I go to bed at night, every night, I'm happy. I'm a fulfilled man. You want to share something? Follow that up. Yeah. Jesus laid down his his self. Right. That's true. That's true. God's just calling us to walk in His path, the path that He's already set the example for. And if you do that, if you've never done that, do it today. If you've done it before but you have strayed and you started following the counsel of the world, renew that commitment today. Come on up and get prayer. Let people talk into your life.